Welcome back to This Is Talking Sci-Fi with Sci-Fi Sean and... Just Randy. And we have a great special guest. And who are you, sir? Robert Robinson, Legend Tripper. You've been on our show before. A couple times. We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of fun <laughs> with you. We brought uh, Robert in today because um, we're getting geared up for Sci-Fi Bartow 2020. And he's going to be one of our main guests. He's going to be set up with copies of his book which is called Legend Tripping the Ultimate Adventure. That's awesome. And he's going to be speaking on stage and he's going to help us with our judging of something we've never done at Sci-Fi Barto before. We're going to have a Bigfoot Skunk Ape call. Ah! Oh, sorry. Is it like that? I don't know. I thought it was like <laughs> Hello, can I speak to Mr. Bigfoot, please? Is he there? Oh, you haven't seen him in a while? All right. I thought it was that kind of thing, but no. No. Seriously, we're going to have a Bigfoot call contest. It's going to be a lot of so we're going to talk about different types of uh, legendary creatures, mythological, whatever you want to call them. Everything from Bigfoot, the Wild Man, Loch Ness Monster. You were just telling me that uh, werewolves have become a popular creature. Yeah, the thing that I refer to it now is the Dog Man. The Dog Man. But it's basically, if you look at the description, we're talking about a werewolf type creature, a bipedal canine type creature. Wow. And they seen, uh, seem to be seen all over the world. I thought when I was doing research that we were pretty much isolated to, you know, the United States. But, uh, I mean, they're all over the place, mm. you know. I mean, in Ecuador, you know, they don't have a Bigfoot, but they, they, they got, got a... They got a wild dog. They got a, a, dog uh, a werewolf-type legend down there that they're pretty animate about. All right. I'm talking to you off uh, before we started the show about El Chupacabra. What is yes. the difference between your werewolf type creature and that creature well okay the history of the chukacabra real quick it started in puerto rico mm -hmm. uh of course the word chukacabra means goat uh you know goat sucker it's goat drinks, sucker right? oh, it drinks okay. the blood out of yeah that. it okay. does it drinks the blood from goats and that's how you know some of the farmers found their goats dead with marks marks in them and the blood neck, gone right and they attribute it to some kind of a lizard type creature and a friend of mine I grew up with told me, you know, when he was going up there, it was kind of the boogeyman to them. Right. You know, they would say, hey, don't go in the woods tonight, Chukacabra gets you. Uh, but, you know, it then morphed into, you know, it was seen in Mexico, and then it was seen in Texas, and then all of a sudden it became a, a feral dog-type creature. Gotcha. And, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, there are some cryptozoologists out there, or, you know, Ken Gearhart's one of them, very, very uh, knowledgeable on the subject okay. of the Chukacabra, the so, um, personally, me, I just, I don't go look for feral dogs. I got you. Though. That's what the dog catcher's for. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, get the dog catcher. <laughs> oh, hey, I got this, this chupacabra in my garbage every, every night. Uh, the neighbor won't control him or leash him. He's all, you don't need to get into all that, you know, so. But all joking aside, it's a, it's a creepy creature. I've seen yes. pictures or people's rendition pictures of it and everything, but. This werewolf, this dog man, this this new thing that's come out. I've seen you talk about it on your Facebook. Yes. Check out Robert's Facebook page. Uh, plug Legend Trippers page. of America, or it goes on Facebook, uh, Robert Robinson Legend Tripper, which I do tend to keep that one up uh, more updated. I continually put articles that I find on the Internet of some of the uh, current sightings of different animals and the paranormal and on the uh, you know extraterrestrial field as well. I do I do it all. Because not only does uh, Robert touch on like monsters, but he's into you. UFOs, mm. ghosts, uh, um, legendary places, buried treasure. buried treasure. There's a whole new buried treasure thing going around now. I've yeah. heard. So. Well, it, it started because of that um, uh, TV show um, uh, Oak Island. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. you know, I I remember reading about Oak Island as a kid. And it's gotten the best of those guys. Them family members. Yes. Hate each other. They, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, I get asked, do you think there, there is something down there? Uh, there? Obviously, there's something down there. I mean, all these people, you know, I mean, if they figured a long time ago it was there's nothing there, I think it would have stopped back then. Well, you look at Florida. You know, it's one of the first places that the pirates and yes. Europeans came to, you know, Ponce de Leon mm -hmm. and all that. So, and, you know, pirates are notorious for burying treasure, and then all of a sudden, or well, their ship sinks on rocks washes up you know well, things oddly like enough florida out of all the states and it has the the most amount of hunt of, <clears throat> of missing treasure or buried treasure out there than any other oh i state didn't realize that didn't we know. have not only pirate treasure but we have confederate treasure there's like three of them out there that haven't been found yet really and of course pirate treasure and uh there's some treasure that supposedly the spanish went ahead and hid you know so the british yeah. didn't get a hold of it <clears throat> so and of course you know 
Florida's always uh, on record for having the biggest hoard of treasure ever found. You know, you had the um, the uh, uh, Tocha by Mel Fisher found that, which was to this date is the largest um, cache of cache. gold ever yeah. found. Wow. Yeah. And that was from a ship off hmm. of uh, off of the Keys. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of sunken treasure. There's yes. Not too long ago, in the last, I won't say four or five years, there was something found in the Gulf of Mexico they brought up. I can't remember the whole details on it, but they found a, a chest of treasure they mm-hmm. brought up, which automatically it's donated to a museum, but I'm sure at some cost to the finders, you know. Yeah, so. Well, there, there's laws, unfortunately, when it comes to treasure hunters, and Florida has some of the strictest laws. Really? So, yeah, you have to put mm-hmm. in for permits and all. I mean, if you see a person on the beach with a metal detector, they had to go pay a, for a permit to go out and do that. Oh, you just I can't no go clue. do it. I did not know that. Oh, wow. yeah. In fact, huh. like I said, Florida is the... Uh, and, of course, you have to declare what you find. Correct. Which a lot of people don't. Right, I was about to say, Absolutely. I didn't realize yeah. they, they, they so much private biggest. collectors yes. and things like that, you know, black market, if you yes. will. You think Indiana you know, Jones had that trouble? Did he have to get a permit? When he was <laughs> well, that's why he goes down to South America where that's they don't have to You're right, you're right. So, <laughs> <laughs> this belongs in a museum, so do you, Jones. <laughs> you know, I love that. Who said that? Was, was that in Indy the, Jr.? No, it was... Uh, that was it, the last one. Yeah, it was the last Where his son... It wasn't was Golden... Him. It was not Golden... Uh, Crystal Skull. It was the one with... Last uh, Crusade. His dad, yes. Yes. The one with yeah. the and it was him as a kid. Yeah, yeah okay. When he found uh, back. the uh, court, uh, Cross of Cortez. Yes, Cross of Cortez. Oh, I yes, you I remember But you can tell now. I'm a bit of an Indiana yeah, Jones fan. Me, but you have to in what you do, you know, but... Uh, well, wow, he was so definitely that first movie definitely uh, inspired sure me to, to get off my butt and get out in there and go do great, stuff. It was great. When that boulder chased him out, I mean that just oh, I saw, but, that was just like because you know when I went to go see it, real sto- quick story, I didn't know anything about it, and my friend I work with said you got to go see this movie and uh, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I said, dude, I don't know, you know, I mean, what's it about? I, I don't want to tell you, but you just got to see it. I, I'll pay your way in. I said, well, if you pay my way in, I'll go see it. <laughs> and then, of course, it starts off, and I see Harrison Ford, and I said, okay, this is one of those period-type movies. And then he goes in, and I said, okay, this is pretty cool. He's got the uh, the idol, and he's running out, and that mm-hmm. boulder, I went, okay, that's the most coolest thing I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Yeah. And you know what? Many a games uses that scene as part of their game. Mm-hmm. Me and the right. wife, we play Crash Bandicoot, and there is a scene in there where the boulders are chasing you, and you're running, and it's it's basically straight out of that, mm-hmm. and it is a fantastic part of the video mm-hmm. game. So. You know, a game that does not have that What's boulder it? thing is Monopoly. That would be a lot more fun if there was a rolling. Boulder. Unless you were playing nice. my wife, because she'd be rolling boulders. <laughs> no, at I you. want a big rolling boulder. And I'd be like, oh my god, it just wiped out Park Place. <laughs> Go to jail. <laughs> I always make fun of my age, like I make fun of Randy's uh, big foot like. Uh, beard so you know that's what i like so i like your beard thank you thank you (laughs) and so did lori Lori gave me his wife gave me a kiss because of my beard yeah yeah she won't go nowhere near my beard so you know she's like (laughs) old scraggly old man yeah it looks like a billy goat james bond villain yeah Yeah. (laughs) thank you robert for understanding that wait a minute you know, Mr. Bond, <laughs> the world shall be hollow without the sky, or some weird crap like that. Do you expect me to talk? <laughs> no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Which movie was that, the 31st or the 32nd? <laughs> <laughs> we got a new one coming out. We do. Yeah. yeah. It's a, look, he's got a woman, a woman supervillain, looks like, which he's had before, but you well, know. Yeah. I heard it was the gentleman that played... Um, Freddie Mercury and the... Uh, You're right. It oh, is. yes. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The other female lead is a bad guy. From mm-hmm. one of the, it's like the sidekick or whatever. Yes. You know, like yeah. Grace, uh, Lee, Grace Jones was in the uh, View to a Kill. Yes. Like a whole lot of vagina in... Yeah. Yeah. Austin Powers. A whole lot of vagina. Those are good movies. <laughs> <Austin Powers. laughs> We're getting way off Monster. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Robert's a lot of fun. He lives close to us. We like having him. Oh, show. man. So we've, wait, we've waited way too long, but I thought this would be a great opportunity for you to come in and talk about uh, your experiences because you've had a lot of great experiences hunting these mm-hmm. legend tripping. And uh, I, I always want to get that right because it's it's fascinating to me. I'm scared to death to get out in the woods by well, myself. You, uh, so. We are going to have you come out. We just we haven't did it because the weather hasn't actually been cooperating. And right. of course, the holidays and you know other things have been going on this time. And you're you going to use me as bait, aren't you? Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and I'm going to be behind the we're camera. We're going to be sitting up in a tree stand. <laughs> well, there's Sean. What the hell's that? Sean, we need. It's to, a bear. 
John, do a scream. <laughs> I'm not gonna scream. We'll save that, we'll save that for sci-fi horror. Yeah. But anyway, um, you've told us some great adventure stories in the past, so I want to focus on um, other legends. Okay. Because um, we know Skunk Ape is uh, with Florida pretty much, and Bigfoot's up in the northern areas, and it's all pretty much close to the same monster. But tell us about tell us, tell us about lake monsters. Where can you go in the United States to look for a lake monster? Well. As far as, you know, we're going to hit the United States up yes. in general, the most popular lake monster is uh, Champ, up oh. in Lake Champlain, yep. up near uh, New York, and, and yeah. I've been up there. It's a beautiful place. Right. Um, camping's cheap. I mean, it's, and uh, the, the lake is very, very clean and clear compared to Loch Ness, which is very uh, murky. Dark. Right, you know? okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's, it's there's, I'm trying to recall the last sighting up there. It's been a while since it had some sightings. And I think a lot of that is that lake gets a lot of boat action or a lot of um, recreational use. There's right. a lot of boats yeah. out there and right. stuff. So, you know, with that in place, I think this animal, whatever it is, this lake monster, sea Left. serpent. Went and found it in the lake. I think it keeps itself, uh, yeah. you know, below service right. and stuff. You know, and just recently they did a study out of Loch Ness where they come to conclusion. Well, some people have come to the conclusion, I'm going to say everybody, that they think they're dealing with a giant eel. Really? I've heard that before. They did some DNA testing and they came up with it. But, you know, when I was up there as a kid, I remember hearing people say that, you know, the Loch Ness has eels in it. Yes, know? it does. So, I mean, it's it's possible. <clears throat> I know uh, Steve Alton's book, uh, um, The Loch, mm-hmm. and, you know, his, you know, it's a venture, a fictional adventure story about Loch Ness. Very good book, too, you know. And it turns out that the, uh, you know, just to ruin it for everybody who ever reads it, that the uh, creature at the end turns out to be a large, a large eel. Oh, right. okay. Mm-hmm. I've, I've heard, heard eel. Very... I've heard seal. I've heard place sturgeon. Places, sturgeon. Plesiosaurus, mm-hmm. which I'm, I'm betting on the dinosaur, but you know. Well, the plesiosaurus. <clears throat> I mean, if you're going to get really, you know, technical, was actually amphibious. Yes. So there would be there would have to be more sightings of this animal if it was a plesiosaurus because mm-hmm. it's an air breather. Right. right. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're feeling, you know, they're concluding this animal's more um, of a, you know. What do you think? Of, we're talking about Lake Champlain. What, what do you think Champ is? Well, J- J- <clears throat> Lake Champlain seems to be on the same lines of Loch Ness. Right. You know, um, you know, and it's that's a, a good lake. question. It's a yeah. huge lake, too. Oh, so. it's huge. In fact, we, you know, we, we stopped up on the way back from uh, <clears throat> on a, when I was in the military. It was a week. I just happened to see signs, and I talked the driver and taking me over there. So oh, that's cool. And we did see the sign saying, you know, this is the home of Champ and stuff. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a beautiful place. I right. really wish we could have stayed there longer. Yeah. And uh, my only other friend of mine, Scott Midas, who lives over in um, Clearwater, he goes up. He's very much into uh, Champ. In fact, he, he was, he's probably the, 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 the person to go to. About Champ, the go-to person. That's Scott awesome. Myers. Have you ever looked him up on Facebook? And if anybody knows anything or the most up-to-date sightings, mm-hmm. it's definitely Scott. Do you do you uh, touch on Champ in your book at all? Or? Yes, in okay. my first book. Yes, that's awesome. I talk about um, there is a lake serpent um, seen up in uh, up in um, in uh, Georgia. Really? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Um, I forget the name of the lake now, <laughs> but uh, they actually have a a, a a display of this animal in there. Well, it used to be in the uh, Welcome Center, but they've moved it over to some tourist place and right, stuff. Right, right. Um, but it's uh, in, kind of an aquatic type creature. It's been seen in the uh, in the rivers, too. Right. And they put it in the Welcome Center. It used to be. It used to be? I mean, I mean, my, I mean that's my a big book, step. I can show it to you. Right? you yeah. know, I mean, uh, that means the government is basically acknowledging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's important information. But it's not, it's more of a river monster than it is an actual that's cool. lake monster. Yeah. Um, we need to get Jeremy Wade Florida, up there to get him then. Here in, Fisher yeah, guy, you know? in Florida, we have Pinky, Pinky. seen over in Lake, uh, <coughs> I mean, um, um, St. John's River. Yes, I've heard mm-hmm. of this. And yeah. it's seen over there the town of... Um, it's a pink, huge... It has, and it's actually seen in Lake Morgan, where... Um, St. John's River runs into, runs into it. Yep. and it hasn't been seen and uh, a lot of people unfortunately have come to the conclusion that it might be a um, 
and manatee and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, what an albino manatee yeah. possibly. Right. Yeah. But yeah. people who have seen it said, no, no, this thing is a little too big for a manatee. Really? Wow. Hmm. I mean, it's, you know, come up and pick people boats up and hmm. stuff, and uh, I can't recall the last sighting on that one, but... Uh, There's so many weird, undiscovered creatures on the planet Earth that we oh, I never tell probably know. You know, giant squids, you know, deep sea creatures. They found a shark not too long ago. Mm-hmm. They thought it was extinct when the dinosaurs... Mm-hmm. I forget what the name of the thing was. It was a weird-looking shark. The Tasmanian tiger. Yes. We found evidence on yeah. the trail cam that it might, unfortunately, with the fires going on, we yeah. may not get that opportunity That's now. That's too bad. Uh, my heart goes out when yeah, I see no anything kidding. about it. Because Australia is like the center of the animal universe, you know. So, um, well, let's hope they can get this thing under control. You know, they're calling all kinds of the, their uh, Australian mm-hmm. National Guard have been called in. and so. Wow. I know it's huge. Mm-hmm. I have friends that have just come back over there, and they said they could see the smoke and all that as well, too. So. There's a gentleman who's on uh, YouTube who does a, um, a um, bushcraft videos, and he came on and said, I can't do them right now. I, <laughs> everything's on fire. I can't wow. go out there. You know? So yeah. When you got all that underbrush and everything, man, it is murder. It happens in Florida with muck fires and all that as well, too. California. California is oh. always on fire, you yeah. know? So... <clears throat> so um, your books. You're going to have copies of them at Sci-Fi Bar to I am. take it, right? And I'll, um, you're going to be up on stage a couple times. I'm really excited about that. Um, I have uh, I have another gentleman that's coming, uh, Mark Muncie. You know, I him. know Mark very he well. Is, Mark, and, uh, he's going to be there with me. Very this. good author. I'd like very Yes, he is. And he does a lot of uh, a, a spooky hunting. And he all does. Mark's well an awesome. Too, so, but, uh, him and really, his wife, two awesome people. They're very awesome people. I love them to death. I've been wanting to have him on the show, but he lives over in the Tampa area. He does. And he's busy, man. He's all over the place. So, he uh, he is a you know he is awesome at networking. Yes, he is. He is a very good networker. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, his books. I have both of his books. You know, Erie, Florida. Right. And his other book, Spooky, it, Spooky Florida, Spooky Florida. I think it's called or something like that. Yeah. But Erie, Florida is the one I kind of. I have a copy of Erie autograph. Mm-hmm. I've read it many times. I love reading through it. All right. So, and your legend tripper. Yes, sir. You do a wide range of out of this world things from UFOs, like I said, ghosts, Bigfoot, skunk ape, Loch Ness monster. What is your favorite thing to study out of all that? Your, I would probably say the, uh, the 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 Bigfoot type creatures. Yeah. And, and a lot of that is because I like to go out camping. Yeah. I like being out in the woods. Right. But you know, I mean, if I get, you know, I mean, and you know, they're seen all over the United States. Yeah. So I mean, I can go to any state, and I can just go get on my, you know, find out and go find a location. I mean, I went into, uh, uh, flew into, uh, um, you know, uh, into Colorado, mm-hmm. and Pikes Peak. They got Bigfoot sightings up in Pikes Peak. Wow. There's a Bigfoot sign. Holy crap! Bigfoot crossing, really. So and do you I think do you think Bigfoot knows that that's where he's supposed to cross the road when he sees the sign? <laughs> my understanding, the sightings no, and they're, they're, they're a little concerned about that. You know? <laughs> hey, what's that? Oh crap! It's big. All right, you have to stop. Yield to Bigfoot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All joking. Florida is going under a mass uh, growth right now. They're building. This morning. They're building um, housing developments everywhere, um, parking lots, uh, more uh, theme parks. Wouldn't you think that the skunk ape, which is indigenous to Florida, is it eventually going to start affecting that? If we you think, oh, you mean the man's encroaching into the, into the territory? Yes. You know, inadvertently that's going to end up yeah. happening. They're building in the Everglades. You know, that's a big sighting. Well, there, there is a large area that we haven't gone into that they're not allowed to build it. Really? In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but like Disney, mm-hmm. you know, when Disney buys a property, they have to buy an additional property where nobody can do anything. Right. If yes. you go on to Point Siena, there is a <clears throat> there is a big wildlife and it's owned by Disney. Really? And the agreement is... That, that they will, you know, if they buy a property, right. they'll yeah. also buy a property that nothing will get done. Um, a Universal has one. I don't know where Universal's uh, piece of property is. That they, right. That's they're the agreement to, with Florida. That they're, they're about to build another theme park next to Universal that has something to do with the Avengers and the Marvel all alone. So. Ooh, well, yeah. I mean, they, that's a, the, the, uh, where are they going to grow? Well, Universal has to be careful because they only own the comic book rights <coughs> right. to the Marvel characters. Right. Mm-hmm. And in fact, uh, I know this is way off base. When uh, they found out, because uh, they Universal thought they were going to buy Marvel, right? They were waiting for Marvel to come down in mm-hmm. price. Well, Disney swooped in and said, "Nah, we'll pay that. Yeah, we'll pay it." And when they heard that, went, "We've lost Marvel Land." 
But somebody went into the contract and right. said, we got it as long as we want, but we have the comic book rights. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, know, you have to put out a certain amount of, I don't know, something. Yes. That, yeah, that... We're so, allowed to bridge on our on our podcast because it's talking sci-fi. Yeah. So you know. But uh, that's all um, right. In fact, the guy I I met was telling me that when they thought they had lost Marvel Land, they were going right to DC. Yeah. I mean, Spider Man was going to become the Batman ride. The Hulk ride was going to become the Superman ride. Nice. Um, and some other things were going to uh, change, but then they looked at the contract and said, "We don't have to change anything. Yeah. We're keeping it." Yeah. So, um, but as far as this new land, from my understanding, they're going to have a, a Universal Monsters land. Oh, okay. Oh, it has something to do with that's right up his alley right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Yes, yeah. Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I forget what the other things are. I never believe anything I read on Facebook, so evidently oh, what I read is... was like, when I said Marvel land, yeah. you know, so you've but educated they... me. That's good, so... Um, but uh, they, they're still keeping it under wraps. Yeah, I'm sure they are. And if supposedly this is where they're going to start shifting uh, Halloween Horror Nights to. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah, it's going to be cool. their area of to versus yeah. where they've had it before. Right. The name Le- Legend Tripping. Yes. Explain that. Uh, okay. Good one. Okay. Wikipedia defines it as the adolescent practice of going into... Uh, um, shut down places in order to go look into a legend which basically saying you're going in there breaking the law and all that mm-hmm. stuff right which will gain popularity from the tv show scooby-doo and all yeah. those right. stuff you know right. the hardy boys yep. three investigators yep. that's what they used to go do i mean i used to love the three investigators absolutely books. um but i said no that's not what legend tripping is you know legend tripping is to go out and do a research and adventure on a legend that science has you know kind of kick to this curb yeah you know like bigfoot right you know Loch Ness monster uh haunted places but i always tell people you can do this stuff and do it legally yes there's no sense in saying you know i'm not right. telling people ever go break the law just to go you know right there's ways of doing things you know i mean i've gone up like the wonder house yeah i remember one when it that one the, not the family that lives there now but the gentleman before that i drove by it i said i'm gonna go find out what's in this place knocked at the door and my wife's like oh you're crazy he's gonna you know tell you to go pound sand they love showing that place and off. he said i told him sir i saw this house and i just love to see it and he said come on in and i grabbed yeah. my wife and he gave us the full tour and wow. i said you yeah. never know until you go up and yeah. ask these people the you know? wonder the wonder house he's speaking of is just right around the corner from our home i mean this house at I live in was part of the uh, they were building a like a sub development with the Wonder House the guy mm-hmm. that originally had owned it uh-huh. said I'm going to build a little house around it he's going to put a big gate like a big uh, cement gate around it mm-hmm. if you down the road when you come up through Kissingen Avenue you can see one of those arches you yeah. know what I'm oh, yeah. what that was that was one of the gates to the Wonder House to this house. big community in the community. south then. wow I did not know that so when I bought this house it had been built on in the 90s but this house is, was built in the early 50s and in the backyard of my house were these big giant they're limestone boulders i mean they were huge and i'm like what in the hell are these things doing here and then i started doing research and found out that was part of the game mm. the, the wall now if you go to the wonder house it's got them big boulders around the front yes, yes. that's that was what that was this was like one of the yards where mm. they put the boulders and stuff sean mm. i have them in my backyard Do you? my house was built in the 20s at the same time the wonder house was being yep. built and I'm two roads mm. over from Sean and across the lake from the Wonder House. You can mm. see the Wonder but, House from his driveway. But so. really these cool. big boulders are all over. If I go digging or try yes. to dig up a palm They're tree, I run across these big boulders. And my neighbor put in a pool, and they had to bring in a special company to remove these big ass rocks. Wow. Now the young couple that has purchased the Wonder House that completely remodel it a ridge to its original form. That's what I heard. And, and they're doing tours. They'll do mm-hmm. tours there. So they did a bunch through Christmas. They did Halloween. Um, the young lady, she's a friend. She's a, she uh, cosplays uh, Elsa from Frozen. She'll walk up in my yard at Christmas dressed as Elsa. And I'm like, <laughs> whoa! And that's how I met her for the first time. Yeah. Very eccentric people like my wife and I are. Um, I don't want to use the word creepy, but creepy cool i will use but check out the wonder house uh it's a great tourist place to go it's a good haunted spot as well it looks like a haunted house it does look like a haunted house so i mean if i was ever to go mm-hmm. where's a haunted oh that house. right there yes. if yeah. it's not it needs to be yeah it's, a, it's more of a <laughs> castle than it is a house so. it is 
Yes, it's more of a castle, and it has a big, like, gothic steel fence around it, and on the bottom of these boulders we were talking about. Did you know about. originally he had it to where on the top of the roof the water was going to collect and then it was going to come down? Yes, absolutely. And it's the same thing if you go down to uh, uh, Hemingway's house down in the Keys. He tried mm-hmm. to do the same thing. Correct. Because yeah. it also acts as a uh, air conditioning. It cools the <clears throat> house. Down. Right, yeah. And I want to say there's there's plant planters around the windows. So yes. So that the water that runs through the house... Mm-hmm. Runs but the gentleman the... before these couple cemented it in, and he, I asked him, I said, oh, why'd you do He goes, I had to. They had corroded so bad uh, that if he didn't do something, that they were going to fall down. And Because yeah, I, gotcha. I was like, oh, you couldn't? He goes, no, I really wanted to save that. Well, but, I want to say the original also cemented the fireplace in because he was losing his mind, and he thought the, that the Americans were watching him because yes. he yes. was sending he smoke was a, signals to the German Germans. Science. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard there's a... At one point, every mirror in the house, you could look at and see the front. Who was at the front door? So, well, no, that's up to the front. I mean, that's up at the top. Yes, right. there is a. In fact, he showed me one that was still in the master bedroom where he could look down and see who was at the front door. Yeah. That's pretty cool. The rest of them, like you said, had all been kind of sealed up sealed when up. they yeah. extended the house out. Because you remember where it used to be it was the outside, and then the owner came and pushed it out and put walls up, mm. so there was no outside. Brand on what right. do you yeah. call that? I don't know. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. But um, he showed me downstairs the little moat, the the, the little mm-hmm. chamber yeah. there in the water, which I kept thinking, that's that's where the creature of the Black right. Lagoon is. Yes, right down probably down. right there. Yeah. Did he say anything about it being haunted or anything or no? He just, I did ask. He just yeah. giggled at me. But a realtor said that she had some incidents when she took some people in there where the doors kept closing on her. Right. Yeah. Now... I don't know what's going on with these people here. I know originally when they got in there, the the gentleman who lives there now, the lawyer, said there was nothing going on. And now, but now I do know. Now they're doing haunted tours through there. Yeah, so. I do know that when <laughs> yeah, um, <so. laughs> I've read some um, incidents. Evidently ghosts make money for people, yeah. evidently, right? So. I know that when you... Um, when some of these spirits see that you're going back and doing stuff for the house, they're less active. Whereas you're doing it in there and destroying stuff and wrecking the house. Right, they're all over you. You know, they're where is the, yeah, yeah, you become the poltergeist. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm mm-hmm. thinking, because this couple is putting this place mm-hmm. back to its where it needs to be, the spirit of, let's say, the, the gentleman that originally built right. this place, because it, it, he's probably happy it, with it. So. He's happy with yeah. what they're doing. Um, I always, and I've heard this from the owners and other people, that there are tunnels underneath that house There's that branch one. out into different places. Well, there's one, and yeah. it goes to the lock system where the water, because that, that, that little um, man-made pond right. where the bridge it goes over, right. they used to take water from mm-hmm. the pond in next to it. Yeah, and there's a lock system down there. Okay. But I guess it looked like it was pretty rusted out when he probably, showed it to me. Yeah, probably. And it looked too darn scary for me to go poke my head in. I wouldn't be yeah. messing I mean, I would have thought there would be an alligator or some nasty looking Net creature or the creature of the black, black lagoon. lagoon. Yes. <laughs> I mean, That's it right. Is, yeah. And I mean, it's, a person can fit down in there. Yeah. yeah. To Just to let you know how big this, this tunnel system is. Wow. And That's of course, really the owner great. at the time didn't really want me going in there either. Right. He was, you know, I don't want you going down there and getting hurt. Because I poked my head in there and I went, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, Barto, anything off the top of your mind ghost related? There is a place not uh, too far from where the sheriff's training area is where there's an orb that is seen across a bridge. I believe it's the Green, uh, I mean, the um, Peace River. Yeah. Yeah. Not the main one on 60. No, the old or, uh, R2 uh, Eagle Lake old, Road. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, it, it, yeah, I'd seen, I'm going to say around the Halloween time. I'm probably right. wrong about that. Right. Um, but that was... Uh, that road's spooky without orbs and yeah. stuff. In my but opinion. near the bridge, there's been an orb scene. And it's, oh, okay. it's been it's been documented. My good friend Maria uh, Tripp, that, uh, she's the assistant curator to the P- uh, Polk County History Museum, which is the old Polk County Courthouse. The mm-hmm. dome building that we always idolized with the, the uh, sci-fi Barto. She said that place is haunted. And I yes. believe it. So, I've done a, a paranormal mm-hmm. when they... Uh, Years ago, they opened it up for paranormal investigations, and uh, me and a couple other ghost teams came out there. But I think we had too many people there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, ghosts are funny folks. So, the least know. amount of people you seem, the more activity you seem to get. I have ghost cats in our house. I yeah. think I might have mentioned this to you before, but uh, they always congregate in the kitchen area in front of the bathroom door, which is just off a of camera here. And when I get up at night, you know, like you have to and go to the restroom or whatever, I swear because we have cats. And they all have specific places that they go and sit and sleep at night. So when I go to the restroom and I uh, I look, 
out of the corner of my eye, I see a cat with a big, tall, stand-up tail, and I look, and it's not there. So I don't know. I, I guess they're okay because I, I've understood that people have lived in this house before I bought it that had lots of pets and things mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, it could be a pet cemetery in my backyard. Well, the story of a some ghost of my, cat. The yeah. lighthouse has a, uh, a story of a ghost cat. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, you know, they're out there. Um, you know, um, Bartow is an interesting place. The Bartow High School. I've heard it's haunted. The main part of it in the auditorium, my wife it's actually got some uh, messages on her recorder one night. So that's really awesome. And uh, we've uh, we've had some sightings over at Summerlin. Yep. Of a, of an old woman. Mm -hmm. The uh, custodial workers have seen her on you know right. various times. Mm -hmm. And I told them next time I said you call me the minute you the second you see them because we got my my wife's got her ghost hunting bag ready to go. We'll be I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning. Right. You call me. I won't right. be out there. I'm gonna tell you one ghost story because we're gonna have to wrap up here in a few minutes. But, okay. Uh, my wife and I stay up at St. Augustine at least two to three times a Beautiful year. Beautiful city. It's the most haunted city in America. Yes. Um, it's the first city of of the United States. Um, we stay on a condo on a beach. It's really nice, older, and it has this private walkway that goes all the way down to the ocean you have to have a code key to get into it. and we take our little dog up there it's, st austin is the most pet friendly place in the universe mm. they love dogs there and everything so one night my wife and i decided we're gonna go watch walk on the beach and look at the stars and all that and i took a little flashlight it was uh, two two times ago we were there and we walked down that bridge and it was close to 9 30 10 o'clock there was hardly no you should see some flashlights on the beach in the distance you can see the lighthouse swinging around the, with the light and we were walking down there and all of a sudden both of her and this is in summertime got this cold chill down our bodies and it felt like somebody was watching us is the way we felt so we went down there and we stood at the end and as we were walking towards the end we looked and there was someone standing at the end of this walkway mm -hmm. it's elevated and then it steps down to the beach we walked up there and there was nobody there, but it was real cold and it creeped us out. So we went on down the beach and we kept looking over our shoulder and we kept seeing an aura, not lit up or anything, but just like an old lady standing at the end of this thing, looking out at the ocean. And it freaked us out. So we went on, she smoked a cigarette, my wife smoked, we came back and again, we looked up and there it was and we get there and there's nothing there. So we walked back up the bridge and uh, and we always kept looking and we went back we've been back twice now since this and we haven't seen this entity or whatever yeah. it was but that's the closest i think we ever came to a ghost well you know a body full apparition on, as they call body, it full body yeah. apparition ghostbusters library whatever it wasn't as clear as that it was more like a a blurriness but okay. you can make something out well right. they also have what they call the shadow people right which is you know yeah. again oh, the same right. aspects of right. uh, you know um of an entity making itself known um, but you know, like you said, Southern Augustine is the most hard. Savannah has been trying to scoop up that reputation. Ghosts make money. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We went down there one time to Savannah ghost conference yeah. and we, my wife, wife likes to go antique and we went into a place and this was a really old place. And I asked the guy, says this place? And he goes, oddly enough, no. Hmm. I said, oh, he goes, it's, yeah, it's kind of funny. This place didn't really have all these haunted places until about five years ago. And, yeah. You know, he says, we have about three places that had a reputation of being haunted. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden the, the ghost, you know, they saw the money aspect and all of a sudden my place is haunted. Yeah. So, and now Savannah is trying to call themselves. Get on that, but, get on that horse, man. But I'm telling you, St. Augustine has always had the reputation longer well, than any other yes. yeah. city in the United States well, as being the built, most haunted. You got a city built almost right on top of a of an ancient graveyard. Yes. You know, the, the, the historic district um, where all the shops and touristy stuff is, there is a mm -hmm. big uh, uh, cemetery there, that, and there's uncovered graves there that have no gravestones or anything. Dude, so. real quick. Yeah. That's where I proposed to my wife at. Yeah. In the but graveyard? We, well, <laughs> we went to the Fountain of Youth attraction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so we sat in a planetarium, had it in my pocket, and I'm like, as soon as we get out of here, I'm going to ask her to marry me. We mosey out of that into this tenant area, and I'm thinking, oh, this is the perfect place. She's looking what's in the tenant area, right? Because I'm not paying attention. I'm nervous. 
and I walk in and I pull it out of my hand and I get ready to go down and I look up and there's a sign that says ancient Indian burial ground. Nice. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I, I put it in my pocket as she's turning around and I'm like, oh God, what do I do? You know, because I'm getting ready to propose, but I want to do it at Indian burial ground. So we mosey out of there. So let's walk out to the water. So we go on out to the water and that's what I did it at. But I nice. was that close to doing it in an Indian burial ground. You would have upset a lot of spirits. You yeah, upset probably. me, I mean, from getting married, you know. <laughs> I can't understand why your wife, who is so awesomely cool, marries a guy who looks like Bigfoot. So, I know, you know. Uh, Hey, we're going to wrap up. We want to thank Robert for coming and spending some time with us. Thank and, you for uh, having me on the show again. You're going to be able to meet him live and in person and shake his hand and talk about Bigfoot, Skunk Apes, uh, Champ, Loch Ness Monster, Ghost at Sci-Fi Bartow, which is coming up fast. It is February the 15th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Robert's going to be there with copies of his book. He's going to speak on stage, meet and greet. It's going to be a big time. If you like myths and magic, this sci-fi bar tool is right up your alley. Thanks for coming to be with us Thank today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see you. And uh, I'm Sci-Fi Sean, and this is Just Randy. And we'll see you next time on Talking Sci-Fi. Bye.